is a great honour to take part in this wonderful event and our gratitude goes to the Commune de Spileto and its Mayor, Umberto de Augustinus, and to Fondazione Festival of the Two Worlds, and its director, Giorgio Ferrara. We would also like to thank all the staff and collaborators of Commune di Spileto and Redazione Festival, and amongst others, Ada Spadoni Urbani, Anna Rita Cosso, and Maria Teresa Bettarini. It gives us particular pleasure to welcome to Spoleto Elizabeth Scott, head of the Guildhall Galleries in London, where the exhibition Visions and Visionaries was first shown from the 11th of December 2018 to the 30th of April 2019. A version of the exhibition has now moved to Spoleto on the occasion of the 2019 Festival of the Two Worlds. On behalf of the Sir Dennis Mann Charitable Trust, we cannot thank enough Flat Time House and its director, Gareth Bell-Jones, curator of our Spoleto exhibition, and Richard Saltoon for their substantial contribution, including the loan of many fascinating works by the post-war conceptual artist John Latham, a visionary genius, who remains an important inspiration for avant-garde art amongst young artists today. We are honoured and excited to have an additional early masterpiece by John Latham, never shown previously in Italy, Dante and Beatrice, and we thank Daniel and Robin Katz for having made that possible. Through the work of several artists, the exhibition suggests that visionary qualities are not exclusive to one period or personality, but they are enduring characteristics of artistic creativity. The art of William Blake is inseparable from the strict rationalism of the Enlightenment period from which it emerged. His imaginative, mystical prints draw from poetry, Christianity, and a reawakening of mythology in British art. One generation later comes another featured artist, the pre-Raphaelite visionary, Edward Coley Byrne-Jones. He too strives for a sense of divinity in his work. Stained glass is an inherently ecclesiastical medium, and his work for a number of churches reinforces his symbolistic vision. Later, John Latham would look to the cosmos and theoretical physics to reach the transcendence that Blake and Burne Jones achieved through religion. It is appropriate that as this exhibition moves from London to Spoleto, it should incorporate several new artists. Ulai, a visionary of 20th century performance art, will feature alongside those mentioned already. Following his work with photography, he pioneered a visceral approach to performance and body art, experimenting with emotional relationships, physical pain, and cinematography. We are extremely grateful to Ulai for his participation, and we would like to thank Lena Pislak and Hannah Ostan Oshbolt of Ulai Foundation for their support. Ulai's ongoing work extends into the present day, and alongside a collection of artists from Age of Future, led by Marcello Pecchioli, should provide a contemporary example of what it means to be a visionary in the 21st century. A subtle thread links this exhibition to Spoleto. Sir Dennis Mann and Gian Carlo Menotti were not only similar in their generosity and philanthropism, but also in their love of opera. It is recorded that the two great men had met in person, and though Sir Dennis is best known for his academic contribution to 17th century Italian painting, his passion for opera should not go unnoticed. Thank you. È un grande onore partecipare a questo meraviglioso evento. 
motivo per cui, a nome della Fondazione Sir Dennis Mahon, vorremmo esprimere la nostra gratitudine al Comune di Spoleto, al suo sindaco Umberto De Augustinis, alla Fondazione Festival dei Due Mondi e al suo direttore Giorgio Ferrara. Ringraziamo vivamente i collaboratori del Comune di Spoleto e della redazione Festival, citando tra gli altri Ada Spadoni Urbani, Anna Rita Cosso e Maria Teresa Bettarini. Un sottile filo collega questa mostra alla città di Spoleto. Sir Denis Mahon e Giancarlo Menotti non erano solo simili nella loro generosità e filantropia, ma anche nel loro amore per l'opera. È testimoniato l'incontro tra i due grandi uomini e sebbene Sir Denis sia più conosciuto per il suo contributo accademico alla pittura italiana del Seicento, la sua passione per l'opera fu intensa e non deve passare inosservata. Grazie. Ulai, a uh, Frank Uwe Leisigen, was born in 1943 in Zollingen in Germany and he is an iconic, groundbreaking artist who has defined not only the field of performance art, body art, but also the field of Polaroid photography. For this particular exhibition, we, Ulai Foundation, in collaboration with Richard Saltoun, Ulai's gallery, decided to show some of the early works of Ulai from the 70s. Some of the works in the medium of Polaroid, which marked the beginning of Ulai's career. It's very important to say that Ulai has mostly work in two media. One is performance, the other one is photography, and in the intersection of both. And when Ulai speaks about the intersection of both, he speaks about the union between performance and photography and calls it performative photography. So in the 70s, in the beginning of the 70s, Ulai used the handheld camera, Polaroid camera, and uh, turned it towards himself. And he used the camera as a tool in front of which he performed. He performed for the camera questioning his own identity gender roles, sexuality, the feminine and the masculine part. So we decided to do a little selection of this early mesmerizing subtle works, one of them being also White Mask from 1973, showing Ulai putting on his face layers and layers of white color and lipstick, changing himself first to a woman and later also to, to a whiteness, kind of wh whitening out his face. So in dialogue with whiteness, we decided to showcase the soliloquy, two images also dating to the beginning of the 70s, uh, again, auto polaroids showing Ulai with lipstick, so it was important for us to create uh, some kind of dialogue in this great spacious room. So on one side it's white mask, on the other side it's soliloquy. Again, from the period of 74, two images of Ulai sending a subtle kiss with colored lips um, and with an earring and uh, colored lashes. So again, this duality of feminine, masculine identity and uh, the question of gender roles. In the period of the 70s, Ulai has created hundreds of series of Polaroids, documenting himself conforming in front of the camera in various roles. One of the series is also this one, entitled Paulai, which is showcased here in Spalletto for the first time, which we're really very happy about. It shows Ulai dressing up in the lingerie of Paola, ex-girlfriend with whom he had a deep and tender love relationship. So this super 
intimate atmosphere of this Paulai series, the subtleness of it. The intimacy is kind of put in a dialogue with Amarilis, the only series that is uh, date, that dates to the 90s, showing for Amarilis. Also, again, in a dialogue with Paulai series, questioning, or at least how I see it, also this subtle, sexual, sensual nature. So we definitely did want to show some sensuality in Zulai work, and I think this special intimate exhibition, intimate, intimate palazzo, does capture this subtleness, intimeness, also sexiness, uh, role-playing that Ulai's work is at least the one from the beginning about. I am delighted to greet you all here today in the name of the Ulai Foundation and especially in the name of Ulai and his wife Lena, who sadly could not join us today. It's a great honor for me to be here today in the city, in this beautiful city of Spoleto for the first time and especially an even greater honor to present the works of the legendary artist, the icon Ulai, to the Spoleto audience in this special historical building in the company of so many others mesmerizing artists of various generations, but especially also in this particular time of the internationally renowned Spoleto Summer Festival. Ulai is not only the one who is famous for his collaboration with Marina Abramovic, but also as a solo artist in search for his identity, whose radical works have pushed the limits not only of performance, but also of photography. And in this particular exhibition, in collaboration with the Richard Saltoun Gallery, we decided to present some early, very intimate, very subtle works from the early 1970s. Some of them are shown here in Spoleto with, for the first time. Uh, I would like to thank to Orieta Benoci Adam and Suzanne Mario, trustees of the Sir Dennis Mahon Charitable Trust for the great fruitful collaboration and for most for what they so passionately do. Establishing connections between different generations of artists, art professionals and art lovers, between various institutions and various parts of the world. It is my and our pleasure, the pleasure of the Foundation to be here and we are more than happy that the exhibition looks just the way it does. Thank you so much.